do a lot of research on Etsy and I am constantly running up against shop ideas that I think would make a whole lot of money and that are pretty easy to implement. So I'm always like, hmm, should I do this shop? But to be honest with you, right now I already have three Etsy shops and no time to implement anything new. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my shop ideas with you. Now, none of these ideas are anything new or revolutionary. They're things that are already selling on Etsy. So they're proven items that I know will make sales. So what I'm gonna do as I go through my list is I'm gonna hop over to Etsy, show you some examples, and then show you what shops that are selling these items are making or estimated to be making using a tool called Everbee. Everbee is one of my favorite tools to do research. And I'll tell you more about Everbee as I use the tool later in this video. But if you decide you wanna use it, I've left an affiliate link in the description for you to go and check it out for free. Okay, just to make things fun, I'm gonna do my list in reverse order. I'm gonna start from the one that I love, but I'm probably not gonna implement and go all the way down to number one, which I probably will implement by the end of 2023. And number two on my list, I actually have everything to implement it right now in my shop, but me and my team just haven't found the time to put it together and make it happen. So you definitely wanna stay tuned to hear number two and number one. Number one is a really good idea, and why not stick around and find out what it is, just in case it's easy for you to implement too. Okay, let's jump into the list. Idea number five is digital planners. Now digital planners are very popular on Etsy right now and I actually love them. I looked at digital planners um, maybe around last year because I actually needed a planner. I wanted to get away from a paper planner. I love my electronics, my phone, my iPad, and I heard about digital planners and I thought these are so cool. So of course me, I went and did some research to figure out how to make them. And they're pretty easy. So let me step back just in case you don't know what a digital planner is. So a digital planner is just a regular planner in a digital format. You use it on your iPad or your phone or even maybe your laptop, but mostly iPads or tablets and you use them like a planner. So you have monthly spreads, daily spreads, and that's Wolf over there making noise. <laughs> so you have monthly spreads and daily spreads, and you can basically keep track of your life. And there are, there are many different types of planners. So you can have just your regular life planner. You can have a business planner. You can have a fitness planner. But all of these planners exist in digital form. And the cool part about them is to make them is pretty easy. All they are are PDF files. Right, PDF files. So if you know how to use Word or you know how to use PowerPoint or you know how to use Canva, then you can easily make these files. Now you wanna be you know, a little bit jazzy with them and be creative because they need to look nice because a person's gonna use them daily. But on a basic level, they are just PDF files that you sell to your customers and then they will pull them up in a program like GoodNotes. So I use GoodNotes and I think another one is Noteworthy. So let's jump over to Etsy and look at some examples of digital planners and then I'll pull up Everbee and we'll look at some estimated revenues for Etsy sellers that are currently selling digital planners so we can see what kind of money we can make. Okay, we are now in Etsy and we're gonna start off by searching for digital planners. But before I jump into that, I do wanna pop over and tell you a little bit about Everbee because I'm gonna use it throughout this entire video to do my research. So I'm just going to go over to the Everbee homepage and basically Everbee is a research tool. You can use it to research and find the best products on Etsy. So you can do product research, revenue analytics, and it helps you save time and you can create bestsellers. So that's basically what I use it for. As I go through and I'm looking for ideas of what I'm going to sell, I'll click over to Everbee and do some research and just trying to get some estimates on um, what's selling and what type of revenue Etsy sellers are making. So that's just a little bit about Everbee. You guys are going to see me use it as we go through this video. So now I'm going to go back over to Etsy and we are on digital planners. So I'm going to search that out. I'm going to search out a digital planner. 
And you can see how everybody is going to give me estimates on the monthly searches. And these are just the results that come up in Etsy as I search. And I'm just going to be simple. I'm going to click on the first one. And that's just Digital Planner. And then you see it's going to give me some options. And I can see things like what's popular now. And for me, I'm always looking for this popular now tag or the bestseller tag. Now, another thing I like to say when I'm doing my research, I do not click on listings that say add by an Etsy seller. And that's just me as an Etsy seller not wanting to run up anybody's ad budget. So it's just something that I do. I think it's just a good protocol because I wouldn't want anybody just clicking on my ads while they're doing their research and spending my ad budget. So I don't usually do that. And you can see that in this digital planner category, there are a lot of popular nails here. It's popular now, popular now. And we're just going to keep scrolling. And there are just so many here to choose from. But instead of just clicking on a random listing, what I'm going to do is now that I'm on this page, I have this toolbar over here that's from Everbee. And once you install the Everbee, I think it's a Chrome extension, then you'll have this toolbar when you are logged into the Etsy account that's associated with it. So I'm just gonna hit product analytics and we're gonna let Everbee tell us a little bit about all the products that were on that page that we were on. So it's telling me that the average favorites 8,448 with an average price of $16 and the average monthly sales of 712 a month, which is not bad. So I am going to just look down in this list and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort this by the estimated revenue last month. And this is just going to give me an idea of which of these planners that were on that page are selling the most last month. And that's an estimate. And then you can see here, I can see like the product, the shop, the price, the estimated sales last month and a total number of sales and then the estimated estimated revenue which is crazy $101,000 for this planner that is crazy that's a $15 planner and they estimate that they sold 6,809 and then the listing has 399 reviews so what I usually do is I just start looking around once I get the top sellers so I'm going to look at this planner right here and we're just going to click on it and we're just going to go see it in Etsy. So this is a planner called That Girl. It's a 2023 planner and they have daily, weekly, monthly spreads. It's a dated planner and of course it's digital because that's what we're looking at. And you can see here it is a bestseller and they're even running it for 60% off right now. So it's regular $14.98. And everybody told us it was $15. And then right now it's going for $5.99. And so if we just take a look at this and scroll through it, it's a cute planner. And it's give you the pictures. And it, it's really a that girl aesthetic planner. And we just scroll through and see what the different spreads look like. But this is what a popular planner looks like right now. The digital planners is not, like I said, anything special. Um, and you basically create these by creating PDF files and arranging them in a certain way. And you usually have links so people can click through as they are using their planner. But they use this on an iPad or a tablet. And then I like to scroll down and just look at the reviews. I am in love with this. I feel so organized. I purchased a few planner. This one is super nice. The planner has become my life. I'm obsessed. So I'm just looking through and looking to see how the Etsy buyers are feeling about this planner. And so this is a good one and it's doing really good. So we are just going to go back to the list. And we have another planner that's $26. It's making an estimated $56,000 a month, which is amazing. So let's go and look at that one. And this one is a basic digital planner. You can see how it has, it looks just like a physical planner that you might buy. It's just in digital form. And you can see here that it works well on an 
iPad and a phone. So both a tablet and a smartphone. And you can see it is 2023 plus 2024 and you get an undated version. So this has a lot in it. And you can see how there are tabs so you can move around the planner easily. And then we're just going to scroll through it so you can get an idea of what digital planners have in them. And it's just showing you all of the different spreads and that you can use it in both landscape and portrait. And you've got yearly and monthly pages. So this is just a planner that has everything in it for you. And it's regular $27.12 and it's 50% off right now, uh, which takes it to $13.56. But that just gives you an idea of what digital planners are. And then again, by looking at Everbee, you can see how much these sellers are estimated to be making off of these planners. And you can see that there are a lot of good numbers here. So that just gives you an idea of what you can do with digital planners. So let's pop back over to the video. Now you guys know I like to give you the pros and the cons of things. And despite how much I love digital planners, digital planners are number five on my list because there are just so many digital planners out there on Etsy. So it's going to take a little time for you to break into the market. You've got to come up with a good idea and then you have to get your planner seen above the ones that are currently already selling. I'm not saying it can't be done, but I just don't want you to think you're going to make a really cool digital planner, put it out on Etsy, and then start making sales the same week. It's going to take you a little time to break into the market, and you might even have to niche down a little bit and not make a general planner, but one for a particular niche like maybe teachers or nurses or college students, and then get that one rolling and start getting some sales in your shop and then kind of branch out to maybe the broader planners. But I wanted to give you that information about planners just in case this one was one you want to do. I want you to have realistic expectations about it. Number four on my list is tumblers and mugs. And to be more specific, print on demand tumblers and mugs. Print on demand is where you basically design an item and then you use another company to make it. For example, you do a design that you might want to be on a t-shirt or in this case a mug or tumbler and then you use a company like Printify or Printful, you upload your design and then when an order comes in, you send it over to Printify or Printful and they make and ship that item to your customer. So you're just concerned with the design and the marketing of your items and the print on demand company does the rest. Print on demand is pretty popular right now because print on demand companies like Printify and Printful can connect directly to your Etsy shop or your Shopify store. So it's really an automated business model. You make the designs, you go and do the work you need to do on those platforms, connect them to your shop, and then it is seamless. A customer orders and they do the fulfillment and you handle customer service. There are a lot of things that you can make with print on demand companies with t-shirts, hoodies, and sweatshirts being the most popular, but you can also do things like mugs, tumblers, candles, notebooks, pillows, blankets, puzzles. There's so many items that you can get from a print on demand company and just add your unique design. Okay, so I think it might be getting a little dark in here. Um, I'm recording in the evening, but what I'm gonna do is go and turn on the light. So you stay right here. Give me one second. Okay, maybe that is better. Or it might be worse. I don't know. <laughs> we got some light now and it was just getting pretty dark. Okay, so we were talking about print on demand companies. So like I said, there are a lot of things that are what I call blanks that you can use that print on demand companies will offer you. But in this case, I think in 2023 that mugs and tumblers would be a good idea because I think they're going to serve a purpose. So right now people are going back to work, offices are opening. I'm even going back into the office, but that's another story. 
offices are opening and people are trying to save money. So they are taking their own tumblers to work or their own coffee mugs to work. And then businesses are trying to save money, meaning that in break rooms, they're not just giving you plastic cups or cups that can be tossed away. They're asking workers to bring their cups into the office. So people might want to bring their own customized tumbler or their own customized coffee mug or a coffee mug that they got as a gift, you know, things like that. So coffee mugs and tumblers seem like an item that people are going to be using right now in 2023. So I think that is a very good thing to sell on Etsy because if you're looking for a customized tumbler or a customized mug, where are you going to go? You're going to go to Etsy. So let's pop over to Etsy and look at some of the examples of tumblers and mugs out there. And then we're going to go and see what kind of sales these sellers are making on Etsy selling these tumblers and mugs. Let's move from our digital planner and go look at some tumbler or mugs. So let's try tumbler first. And we're going to be a little specific. Let's look at teacher tumbler. Okay, and let's look at what we have here. So we've got personalized teacher tumblers, uh, teacher tumbler personalized, and we are seeing the popular now tag, which we want to see. We even have a bestseller tag here, which we want to see. And this one might just be an SVG file because the price point is really low. We're just gonna keep looking. But this one is definitely a tumbler because it's $22.99 and that's 50% off. So it looks like we got some results for tumblers here. And I think I'm getting a mixture of designs and actual tumblers in this search. So let's just pop over to Everbee and see what we see on this page. So again, I'm gonna go to product analytics. See what we get and then go to estimated revenue in the last month. And okay, so we've got a personalized teacher tumbler. It is priced at $46 and estimated revenue $20,732 with 503 sales. So that looks pretty good. So let's go and look at that one. And we just click on it. And this is a personalized teacher life tumbler gift for school teacher. It's a cheetah print and it is a bestseller and that's what we like to see. And it retails or it regularly sells for $45.98, but they're selling it for 50% off at $22.99, which is pretty good. So let's just scroll through and look at this. It is a really cute tumbler. And look at the picture. It fits cup holders, leak proof lid and ship same day which is pretty cool so yeah this is just gives you an idea of what type of tumblers are selling so let's go and look at another one we're gonna go back and we've got this another this is another personalized one from the same company let's look at this teacher tumbler right here so estimated total sales uh, $9,549 at 10,000 sales. Let's peek at this. Another bestseller. And you always like it when you see a lot of bestsellers in a category. So just scroll through and just give you some ideas of what these look like. Again, super cute. Just basic tumblers that are customized with a name. So yeah, so we've done some tumblers. Now let's go away from this search and maybe do mugs. And so let's do, I'm gonna do like a real broad search on this um, and just do mugs, All right? And let's see what the search results are. So you got handmade mugs and then just regular mugs. So let's just go regular mugs and see what we get. And again, I'm seeing popular now. This freak in the sheets is pretty cute. And that's just a Excel spreadsheet kind of design. Super cute. Um, and a tarot, a feminist gift. Popular, popular. So there's a lot that you can do here with mugs. 
I see people selling custom mugs where they let people give them the words that they want to go on the mugs. And even look at this one, just a pressed flowers mug, boho. A simple flower design that you can make inside of Canva is popular. So I'm seeing enough popular now results that I can go over to Everbee. And I think this one is super cute with the custom pet. So that is cute. A lot of Excel based stuff. Trust me, I know my sheet. That's pretty cool. So let's go over to Everbee and see what's here. So again, product analytics. Go in here, estimated revenue. Let's search and see what we got. So we've got a mug here. Number one, estimated revenue, $12,000, 871. We've got 8,999. So we've got some good numbers here, some good sales. And we can just go and look at them. So let's look at this one right here. Kind of the tarot card mug. It's a bestseller. Um, it is regular $43, which is expensive for a mug. So that's good. And people are buying it. And they're only running a 10% off sale. So they're doing pretty good without a 50% off discount. And so you can see what the mug looks like here. And another thing about this one is that this mug is not even personalized. So this is a good one for print on demand. You come up, load the design into whatever print on demand company you're using, and there's no customizations that you have to do with it. And then even if you are going to do customizations, Printful has the technology that allow you to have the customer to put in a personalized name or word into um, your listing, and then they can go ahead and purchase it that way. Now, I actually, let me back up because I've seen that add-in work on Shopify. Not so sure about Etsy, but I'm sure there's a way you can do the personal personalization on Etsy as well. All right, so we've looked at that one. Let's just go look at another one that has pretty good sales. Let's look at this one right here, $4,000, which is still pretty good. And this is a personalized mug with flowers, super cute. A good birthday gift. So yeah, pretty nice. And you can see what you can do with mugs. So another good area to be in. Again, if you go in the Tumblr or mug category and you're going to build a shop around it, you can go with different themes. Um, like I said, like we did teachers here. You can go with gardeners. You can go with, um, you know, different, like this was um, tarot cards. You can go with astrology. There's a lot that you can do. And if you decide to go with more of a theme, meaning you're going to do a shop that is targeting a particular audience, then you can do, let's say if you went with the astrology theme, then you can have different types of astrology products in your shop. So astrology mugs, astrology blankets, and things like that. And if you're in the print on demand space, then you can do different types of pro products just on that one theme. So that's something you can think about when you're trying to design your shop. So let's pop back over to the video until we get to the next product that we're going to research. Number three on my list for things you can sell on Etsy in 2023 are candles. And my daughter is actually starting her own candle shop right now. She's kind of in the R&D phase trying to figure out what candle jars she want to use, what type of wicks and fragrances and her theme. But candles sell very well on Etsy. So when she mentioned that she wanted to sell candles, I thought it was a pretty good idea. And I know back in 2021, 2022, I followed a few candle makers on TikTok that kind of blew up their businesses just by using TikTok. So I'm thinking she will not even need to use pay advertising. She's young, she can get on TikTok, advertise her candles, and I even recommend that she document her whole candle making process because then that way she could get maybe some YouTube videos out of it, some TikTok content, and sell her candles on Etsy. You see where I'm going here, just making money all over the place. 
Another thing to note about candles is that people are looking for candles that don't put toxins into the air. So you can start a candle shop where you use waxes that don't do this. I know right now my daughter is working with soy wax, um, but I, I'm not very researched on it. She's doing it. But you can do your research and look for candles that don't put harmful chemicals in the air and you'll do pretty good on Etsy because you're thinking um, about it in a more sustainable fashion and trying to do better for the planet. Now my daughter wants to make her own candles because she finds it fun, but you can also start selling candles on Etsy using a print on demand model. So some print on demand companies do offer candles that you can design the labels for and design your own candle line. I know I checked on Printful and they do offer candles and I think Printify offers candles as well. So you can sell candles without going through all of the drama of making them and doing all the research that my daughter is doing now. And like I said, candles do sell well on Etsy. So let's hop over to Etsy and look at some candles that are popular right now and look at what type of sales Etsy sellers are making with them. Let's research some candles. So I'm going to, just based on what I've been doing with my daughter, I'm going to search for soy wax candles. So soy wax candle, you can see it's the first one, um, or just a soy candle. Let's just do a soy candle. It's got more monthly searches. Click on that, and let's see what we got right out of the gate we've got a lot of popular ones um some best sellers and our first row is ads so we're not going to click on those but we're just going to scroll down and we'll get the same options but you see you got pure soy wet candles 18.99 is popular these in the cute little tins that are regular 13.99 are popular so popular 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 on every row which is a good thing. That's what you want to see. So let's pop over to Everbee and look at some revenue numbers. So averaging $18. And let's do our regular sorting. Top result is $19,068 with 15,003 in total number of sales. So let's go and look at this. And this is an eight ounce soy candle. All right, I love it. First, I love to see in cart. So this is just telling you that there are 20 plus people that have this candle in their cart right now and they're thinking about buying it. And my rationale is always, if you have a lot of people that are thinking about buying it, you have a lot of people that have already bought it. And this is saying it's a bestseller. It's eight ounces, it's soy, it's in some cute little tins and... um. Looks like it has just kind of a basic label on it. And it's telling you there's free shipping over 35 in the USA, which is an Etsy thing. But we can just scroll through here. You can see how they burn. You can see the different wicks. And yeah, and you guys can see this is not an elaborate candle. People are just looking for clean burning soy candles. Nothing special here, but it's probably just a good product with a good scent. And they're nice, cute little candles. And so we're just going to go through the material. You can choose a cotton wick or a wood wick. And my daughter has had cotton wicks and she's getting ready to play with the wood wick. So curious to see how that goes. And then you can see the different scent options. But you can see out here, uh, this seller is making good money off of this type of candle. And again, you can do candles where you make them yourself or you can do the print on demand model. So let's look at another one. Next one down, um, there's a big dip in these two. So this one has $4,785 in revenue last month and that's estimated with 3,777 sales. So let's go look at that and the candles are the same price. And this is another eight ounce candle. Another one that's in tens and I'm recognizing that this is actually the same seller. So they're doing pretty good with this eight ounce model. And this is an herbal and floral soy candle. And again, a best seller. And you guys can just see how they burn. So it just gives you an idea of what's happening in the candle market. So again, we can scroll down. And so this seller has the top two results. And you can see that there are sell other sellers in there. 
So you, you know, you're not being dominated not too much by one seller, but you can jump in there. And so these are, remember, specifically soy candles. I'm going to apologize in advance for this light, but I lost my daylight and we got to go with what we're working with. So we're just going to keep going. But next video, guys, I'm going to do better with making sure I don't lose my light. So let me just get comfortable here and then we're going to keep going and just get back into the list. Now we are at number two. Now number two was the one that I told you guys about that I have everything, and I do mean everything, in my shop right now to implement. We just haven't done it. And that is bridesmaid gifts or what we call bride boxes. So right now in my shop, I sell customized joggers for brides. So basically you can get a jogger with like Mrs. Jones going down and you can get a hoodie that says wifey or whatever you want on the hoodie. And we do them for grooms too. We do them in black so you can get bride and groom, like a white set and a black set. But you see where I'm going here. So what we decided was that we could make um, bridesmaid gifts or bride boxes where you can have a jogger, a nice candle, maybe a wine glass or a flask, or just a lot of nice little things. And you could either, as a maybe maid of honor, get one for a bride and give her a box with all of this stuff in it. Or as a bride, you can do bridesmaid gifts and give a box to each one of your bridesmaids. And maybe have joggers that say bridesmaid on it or maid of honor or things like that. So maybe a box with an apparel item in it and then some more cute little trinkety things. So right now downstairs I have candles that I can customize and I can put each one of the bridesmaids name on them or the bride's name on them. I have candles, I have flasks, I have shot glasses, I have wine flutes and I'm sure I'm forgetting something else that we were going to put in the box but I have all of that stuff downstairs and just haven't implemented it yet and these seem to sell really good on Etsy it doesn't cost much to get all of the supplies that go in it and then of course I was already halfway there already doing the jogging suits or the sweatshirts or t-shirts or whatever that I can customize so this would they would just go together so this is a pretty good idea of something that I wanted to do I just haven't done yet and let's say you might know how to make let's say scrunchies or bath bombs or um, candles or anything that you can package together and make maybe a bride or a bridesmaid gift so let's hop over to Etsy and see what some of these bridesmaid or bride boxes look like and see what Etsy sellers are making from them all right, let's see what we can find in the area of bridesmaid gift boxes or bride boxes. So I'm just gonna start typing. I see bridesmaid gifts um, has a really good search result. So let's see what we can find in there. And then I see bridesmaid proposal box, which is good. And then bridesmaid box. So let's just go straight to bridesmaid box since we were specifically talking about boxes. And we see some popular ones. So this one is personalized with maybe the bridesmaid's name and then custom gift box. And you can see how this one um, is kind of what I was talking about. I'm just gonna click in it before we go into our Everbee search. But you can see how it's a box and it has maybe a tumbler personalized and some glasses, just cute gifts that your bridesmaids might want. And just, just scroll through here and look at it. And this is a bestseller. Pretty cute box. And you see, it looks like this one might have a wine tumbler in it that's personalized. So just to give you an idea of what this what bridesmaid boxes are or bridesmaid proposal boxes are. So we're gonna come out of this and let's I see enough popular stuff. Let's go look in Everbee and look at some of the revenue. We're going to do our sort. And we see good numbers. So number one, um, revenue last month, $33,919 US, which is awesome. 
let's go peek at that one. These boxes are running at a $30 price point. And first thing we do are cute little kind of glasses that are personalized. So bridesmaid proposal, uh, customized glass tumbler. So this is just the tumbler. It's not even a full box, which again, makes me kind of happy because it's a little bit simpler than we were thinking. Not exactly what we want, but these are cute. So let's go and see if we can find an actual box. And I'm looking at the pictures here. And it looks like uh, these kind of glass uh, jars or whatever you want to call them, <laughs> glass cups or uh, whatever, are doing pretty good. Um, this one looks like it's an actual box. Um, revenue last month, $23,829. So let's go and look at that one. And super cute, kind of a hair clip. And don't know what that is, but we can look and find out. And then kind of a wine customized wine tumbler and some scrunchies so let's go look at what's in here and you can get customized cards you can personalize the top of the box and let's see uh, da, 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 da. you got hair ties you got a champagne flute a mirror and then a polka dot pen scrunchies foam rolls and a jelly hair clip so just to give you an idea of some things that can go in the box, but depending on what you sell or what you know how to make or what you can source, you can put different things in your box and all things that bridesmaids might want as a gift. And then you can, of course, not leave the guys out. Groomsmen like gifts too. So you can do both bridesmaid and groomsmen gifts or boxes. Um, this one is an Etsy pick, which is kind of cool. And, you know, I told you I like that. Um, in 20 plus carts because that means people are looking at it they're saving it on their list and if people are saving it in their cart people are actually buying it as well and then we saw some of the revenue numbers so just some different options so this gives you an idea on the bridesmaid boxes and now we're at number one number one is an idea that I have been trying to get somebody in my circle to do for so long and it is digital mock-ups. Okay, you're saying, Sean, what's a digital mock-up? Okay, so in my Etsy shop or in any Etsy shop, you have to take pictures of your items. And if you're somebody like me that makes t-shirts, you don't wanna have to press every t-shirt or every design on a t-shirt to take a picture. What you do is you use a mock-up. So you take a photo of someone in maybe a gilded hoodie or you know a gilded sweatshirt and you set up that photo where a person is sitting in a cute spot maybe on a sofa like this maybe holding a starbucks mug and the t-shirt is showing or the hoodie is showing and then me as an etsy seller all i would have to do was buy that mock-up and then use a program like canva or photoshop and then superimpose my designs into the mock-up so I can create really good photos for my shop. Now, I, as an Etsy seller, go on Etsy all the time looking for mock-up photos. I'm already on Etsy. I know that they sell them there. They're fairly inexpensive, and all I have to do is go and find the one that's gonna give me the vibe that I want for the shop. Now, I might do this every season because I might want some summer mock-ups I might want some Valentine's Day markups. I definitely want to jazz my shop up for Christmas and have Christmas mockups. And Halloween is another time where you're usually looking for mockups that are gonna be, you know, kind of spooky and just fit the vibe of the designs that you're selling. Now you can have mockups for, like I said, t-shirts and hoodies, but you can also have mockups for tumblers, mugs wall art so pretty much anything that you would sell where somebody would put a different design on that same blank you can do mock-ups for so for me mock-ups seem like kind of a no-brainer because i have all of the hoodies the sweatshirts the t-shirts the different colors in stock downstairs in my shop so if i have to take pictures anyway why not stop and take the time to take a picture stage it nice for the different seasons 
in the inventory that I already have downstairs. All I pretty much need is a model, somebody to wear them and to set the stage. And I have someone that works with me with social media, so we might as well do these things at one time. So it's a no brainer for me to incorporate mock-ups kind of in my shop, especially now that I'm selling blanks and my target customer is other t-shirt shops or different business owners. So it's just kind of a no-brainer to do mock-ups. But for you, mock-ups is a great idea. So to do a mock-up, all you really need is a nice camera. And I'm saying a nice camera, but you can use, if you got a pretty good iPhone or Android phone with a good camera, there you go. But you'll have to learn lighting. You have to figure out how to stage things to make them look nice and see what's selling out there. And to do that, all you have to do is what we've been doing throughout this whole video, research on Etsy. So let's pop over to Etsy and look at some mock-ups that are selling. I even show you some that I purchased and then we'll look and see what kind of revenue you can make if you sell mock-ups on Etsy. Let's jump into our mock-up search. So I call them digital mock-ups, but I wonder if you have to put in digital mock-ups or just mock-ups and it's kind of the same thing. So so digital mock-ups gives us something, um, but I'm just gonna do mock-ups. And we got a mock-up bundle. Let's just go with mock-ups. And then you'll notice that the amount of searches was a lot lower than some of the other products that we're looking at. But don't be alarmed at that. You just have to realize that mock-ups are geared towards a certain audience. They're geared towards people with businesses and not just the, the public in general. So if we scroll down, we see a lot of popular things. And what I've been noticing now is that mock-up bundles are pretty popular. So think about that if you decide to go into digital mock-ups. So you make your individual mock-ups, but then you would also uh, bundle them um, because it looks like people are wanting bundles when they're doing mock-ups. And I can get it because if I was going to do my shop, I would want to just get all the mock-ups or all the shirts or mugs or things that I would want at one time so I can, you know, don't have to go back and forth buying them onesie twosie. But you can see here a lot of popular now, so mock-ups are very popular. And let's go in Everbee and look at some revenue. So we're gonna click there. And then let's look at revenue in the last month. And so here we go. First one is a whole shop mock-up. So it's a bundle and we see estimated sales last month, 515 resulting in $20,984, which is great. And that's $20,000 or $21,000 on a digital product. So let's go and look at that bundle. And they are advertising it as a whole shop bundle. Includes all current and future mock-ups. So this is something interesting. So they're kind of doing a, almost like a subscription type thing, although you pay one time, but you get all of the mock-ups that they have in their shop right now and then any of their future mock-ups, which is a pretty good deal as a buyer. You know, I would jump all over this. So let's scroll through and you can see they're showing you how you take their mock-up in the Canva and kind of create your pictures that you'll use on your Etsy shop or your Shopify store. It doesn't have to be for just Etsy or any type of e-commerce store that you're going to create. And you can see how simple it is. And then, you know, just some information that they're giving you. And then I want to point this out that they're showing you that they're going to give you mock-ups for tote bags, coffee mugs. They give you the popular shirts, the Bella Canvas colors, all of that, the Gildans. So these are things that I use in my shop all the time. Uh, mock-ups for couples, baby, toddlers. So if you're going to do mock-ups, you have to think about, now you might not start right out of the gate with all of these things, but you see you have room to grow to do mock-ups for all different types of products. 
So let's just continue to scroll through. And it's telling you a little bit about them, giving you some examples of what you're going to get from their mock-up bundle or their whole shop bundle. But you see, you know, there's a lot that you can do with this. It says a bestseller and it's regular $45 and they're even running it on sale for $18. So they must be doing pretty good with it. And then, like I said, we saw the estimated revenue and you can look at, you know, just how many sales their shop is getting. Let's go look at one more. Let's try to remember so we don't use the same one. Uh, next one on the list is Dolly Mox and I've bought mock-ups from Dolly Mox before because that name is very familiar and again $20,000 in revenue estimated revenue I like to say estimated because these tools are not exact um, but estimated revenue $20,000 so let's go look at their mock-up and again we got another bundle so bundles are doing good now this bundle is regular $100 and they've marked it down by 70% so it's $30 so this is a Bella and Bella Canvas bundle. So this is not even a whole shop. This is just a Bella Canvas bundle that's doing really good. And it's telling you the different Bella Canvas shirt styles and it looks like it's got some gildens in there. But let's scroll through. And they're giving you their best selling right. So yeah, I do. I have these mock-ups on my shop. I know they look pretty familiar. And you know, I don't believe I bought a bundle, but I could have bought this and got all of the different shirt colors and not have bought maybe four separate ones for my listings. Well, let's just scroll through. They've got flat lays, flat lays on the Gildan sweatshirts um, on the rack for spring. And then, like I said, remember I told you that I buy mock-ups by season and see they have broken their bundles up by season. So you can get, you know, kind of springy designs and colors summer but just to give you an idea of what you can do and like i said basically my mock-ups are just them staging the shirts or the mugs or whatever the product is really pretty so you can come in and put your design on it so that that just shows you what you can do with mock-ups and again twenty thousand dollars twelve thousand dollars in sales six thousand four thousand even if you were making, you know, $3,000 on uh, digital mockups, you're doing really good. So there you have it. Those are the five Etsy shops that I would start right now if I had the time. And again, number one and number two on the list, I probably will be doing by the end of this year because for number two, of course, I have all the stuff. And for the mockups, I'm going in that direction anyway, so I'm probably going to implement that. But there is enough room on Etsy for everybody. And if any of these ideas sound like something you might want to do, what you should do right now is watch this video right here to figure out how you start your Etsy shop. I'm going to walk you step by step through starting it from A to Z. And I also have a link in the description where you can start your shop with 40 free listings. You get 40 free listings. And for using my affiliate link, I get 40 free listings. So it is a win-win for both of us. But don't be scared about it. You can do it. You've got the ideas now. And this video is going to show you how to get everything started.